This video is about my efforts of securing the track to the concrete base and a couple of things that I've learned along the way. I can understand why so many people you use wood or any other soft material as a track base. It must be easier to work with and easier to make it precise. I couldn't rely on the traditional track laying methods and I had to think outside the box. I knew that drilling into concrete is not easy. Not actually the drilling which is the problem, but making it precise. The drill bit always moves around as soon as I turn the drill on and I usually end up making a hole somewhere within a 5mm circle where it should be. Screwing the sleepers directly into the concrete wasn't an option because I just couldn't guarantee that it's going to be in the place where I want it. So I needed some sort of proxy. And this proxy is basically a piece of metal. I drill a hole next to the track, I, the screw goes into the hole which pushes this metal bar down, which then presses the track against the concrete. I'm using Paco Flexi Track, which has a piece of plastic strip in between the sleepers. The metal uh, bar goes into the gap between the rail and the plastic strip. Finding a metal bar wasn't easy. I ended up in a store which is selling cabinet and uh, kitchen supplies. It had to be a narrow enough to fit in between the sleepers and still leave some space spared but in the same time strong enough to fulfill its function. I found an L-shaped bracket, about 4 cm long, 8 mm wide. It was probably designed to hold shelves or something similar. One side of the L was long with two holes and a perpendicular end is a short one which I just break off because it was in the way and I didn't need it that. So this is the bracket I'm using to Fasten the rails. It's sort of like an L shaped metal, must be galvanized or something. And um, the reason I choose this is because it has this um, eye here, so that gives me enough room to, you know, just to adjust a little bit and then also adjust the rails. So um, I don't have to be very precise with the uh, drilling of the holes. The first step is to drill the holes. As you can see, I just drill in between the sleepers, probably about one centimeter away from the track. The dowel goes into the hole and then the metal bar is placed. The setup does tolerate some sort of misalignment of the hole, so um, that works quite well. And because the metal bar is shortened and the uh, space between the sleepers, you know, it can just you know, sort of move around and find its place, depending on where I manage to drill the hole. Another example. This points out one of the issues. On the far side, uh, chips of concrete broke off around the hole, leaving a large pothole. I had to bend the bracket and it still uh, lift the track instead of holding it down. Some more bending solved the problem and probably it is still not perfect. I'm using this frame to explain what I have learned. Originally I thought having this oval hole at the end of the bracket is going to make a difference, but not really. Since the other end of the track is in between the rails, it doesn't really make a huge difference if it's just a couple of millimeters in or maybe you know six or seven. But what really makes a difference is how much metal or how much of the bar I have on the other side of the screw. For the best result, the bracket should extend beyond the dip which is created by the drill so that when uh, the screw is fastened, it acts as a lever and it pivots around the point which is sufficiently high and it's not, well, it's not in the dip. This ensures that the bracket applies a downward force on the track. Therefore, a simple metal plate of the same size with a single hole around 7 or 10 millimeters from the end would have been sufficient. Here I'm working my way through the turnouts. Nothing scientific. I'm looking at the track, making sure that the straight sections are straight and uh, with more or less I drilling it. I use a small box car to check whether the wire is smooth or not. I drill at strategic places like before and after the turnout and every meter or so on open track.
update on the layout. Um, this morning I managed to get from the beginning of the station all the way to sort of here where I ran out of brackets. So um, the rail in this section, uh, the, the hole's been drilled, the brackets have been inserted and they are all fastened. Uh, where is it? Yeah, yeah. So it's holding the rail nice and firm. Or in some places I can move them around, but in most places it's uh, quite firm. And I managed to get the track also, well, quite straight. I have some, have some issues with the level, but um, I will have to deal with that next time. Another bracket. So this is a section I had to do a bit of manual adjustment because um, the track up until here was laid last year and then I started building the um, the station with the turnout and there was this probably one and a half centimeters of gap so I had to um, cut a small section of the rail and it was really just to, really difficult to fit it in because obviously there was not enough room for um, the for the ray to move and the the point was already fastened so but I managed to do it and there is not not a lot of gap so uh, the 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 train runs smooth and so talking about level um, yes I think here so I managed to pick a spot on the track where it's sort of um, a couple of millimeters below the the other uh, the you know the rest of the rail, so there is a bit of a dip here. So I will have to see if it um, makes an issue with um, you know with running the trains. If not, it should be good enough for me. Another view of the station, nice and straight, trains coming in, very nice gentle curve, so fourth track, third track, that's the main line, it's a new, well it's going to be the first track on the left, and all the way to the other end. Um, this is a section of the track that I did last year. Um, so I just wanted to show this because the um, this clip or bracket doesn't really rust so even where at the even at the end where I uh, you know basically sheared off the the vertical part it still seems to be quite you know okay doesn't rust so um, it appears to be fine obviously my other issue is the the ballasting it just didn't work out the way I wanted So this is my Marklin Moxie engine, all metal construction. Um, it has the same um, LGB type pickups, and also there are pickups from the Reyes, I think. This is my test engine. Again, note that the this track hasn't been cleaned since last year, so it's probably quite dirty, but probably should be good enough for this small engine. Almost.
The next step was to span the gap of the future bridges. I have three of them all together. I used a scrap piece of lumber left over from the construction of the house. It's sort of like a 2x6, which was cut the size of the gap. I used two of the off-cut pieces um, to hold the bridge. I drilled holes in them and I used a screw to make a dent on the concrete block to uh, show where I have to drill. At the end I also screwed the bridge onto the block just to make sure it, it cannot be knocked over by accident. I decided not to follow any instructions when laying the track, so I have soldered every single fish bait on the first 50 meters that I have, I have laid. I realized my mistake after reading the instructions on the back of the leaflet which came with the track. Then I decided to ignore my mistake and I kept soldering the fish plate, but only in the curves. So what seems to work for me is that when I start the curve, I bend the track to the right shape and I cut off the excess rail. After I connect the next section with the fish plate, I keep it straight and then I solder the fish plates. By soldering the fish plates, I ensure that the rail doesn't move on the previously laid track, so it keeps the original curve. But it makes it a little bit difficult to bend the new section because I have to bend an entire uh, rail, you know, starting from the solder. Also, I have to be really careful not to solder a kink because there is no going back. The new track has to be tangent to the existing curve. I learned this the hard way. Unfortunately, there are some not so nice transitions in my curves. It is noticeable on a fixed axle stop, but it's not too bad. Finally completing the loop with a 10 cm or so stub, which basically connects the, the curved section on the right that I started last year and the brand new track on the left. loop is complete. I needed a small engineering train to test the track before I hook it up to the power supply. So I had a spare Aristo motor block, a 12 volt battery and this is one of these Chinese remotes. So um, it also works from 12 volts so the, uh, the, the battery provides 12 volt and then one of the channel actually turns the motor on and I used a piece of uh, steel wire uh, shape it into a sort of loop to go around the coupling of this on the, uh, of this flat car and 
that's my engineering train. So I push the button. Hey! That's all for now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode of Garden Railway is Born.